it. Yes, okay, here we go. And boom, we are alive, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to be taking a little bit of a different route to end up at the same place that we normally go. So we're going to start by taking a look at some of our favorite alternative digital assets. We're going to go over Link, Ave, maybe Band. Yeah, I think Band. No, Dot and Band. And then Bitcoin and Ethereum at the end of this. So please stick around for the end of the episode where we go over all the community chats. Um, so the first part, as always, we're just going to flow right into the screen and uh we're uh we're i think yeah we're gonna dive right in so you should be able to see link on the four hour right now and uh, everything's looking pretty good so this is the chart that we had drawn up over the last few days uh again going over the educational aspect of the horizontal trading ranges i think is such a powerful aspect to what we do on a daily basis and i hope that pretty much by doing these consistent I guess broad spectrum analyzations of each market as it happens, you guys are learning as much as possible. So Chainlink is currently basically in its backup. So we go over our regular, uh, our regular market analysis. You've got our primary support, our buying climax, or you could call this an automatic rally too. Again, depending on how you look at the chart. If we do scroll out, we can see that we saw our buying climax up here, distribution, and our selling climax here. So this was our first automatic rally. But it's uh, let's just look at it as this more uh, as a reaccumulation range because it does fit that conjecture, I think, a bit more smoothly. So we had our primary SOS the other day, which was our first sign of strength, um, and we dropped back down to the LPS. Now there's two really important things that are taking place right now. The the SOS into this new trading range is really important. So as we zoom a little closer and we focus on this new trading range that took place, we can see that we had our spring uh, just the other day. It becomes a little more clear if we look on the one hour, some of the characteristics of that spring. Again, for those of you who have been studying with us or in doing your homework, you will recognize the characterization of this large amount of supply that came into the market, testing the bottom of the trading range and the fact that we rose on pretty diminished supply continually outside of the box. This is important for two reasons. Number one, uh, Link is r basically right on the tail end of its explosion. So again, we look at the four hour, we can see that we're, we went out of one trading range into another, and we're in the final backup phase of that secondary trading range, what's known as the SOS and the backup phase. For those of you that have been joining us for long enough, you will recognize this from when we were charting Ethereum back at $380 and $404 and said, whoa, guys, this is going to be an explosive move out of this box. So buckle up for the ride. Now, the Chainlink has been rather boring the entire time Ethereum and Bitcoin have been on their run. So this is kind of an opportunity for Chainlink to catch up. Now, remembering this is one of the large market players and it is important to remember that we're kind of trying to address all of the market leaders because they're the most important. Now, um, Chainlink had been on a bull market run while well, Bitcoin and Ethereum were actually relatively boring. So and they're almost like a little bit of a game of a ping pong between the assets moving. And there's a reason for this is because good investors will move in from and out of an overvalued asset into an undervalued asset as prices change. So as Bitcoin and Ethereum have become more and more overvalued, they'll move into the undervalued assets like Link. And this is a good strategy to, to partake in is effectively moving with the trend. Now, it's easier to build a consistent investment strategy, but we'll talk about that later. So the explosions in the altcoin space right now are also coming again from that same type of mentality. When you have one asset that's now overvalued, move into another undervalued asset and enjoy the supply and demand change. So from the bottom of the spring, we had this big wick. And this is another great kind of lesson to learn from is the spring. The spring usually have these really long down wicks as well as the volume characteristics. And that's important to remember for a few reasons. You want to not only be able to address the horizontal trading range, but you really want to start as you become more like the architecture is like the horizontal trading range effectively. But as you get better at that, you want to notice the volume characteristics, which is more of like a like the dressing of that architecture. So here on the spring that we had in the previous trading range, you can see the same thing. Very long wick, a lot of supply come into the market. This is important because when you're studying, you want to make sure you're defining these characteristics. Another important part is this declining volume into the backup phase. And again, uh, we're likely going to see a big amount of volume come in here to really test how high it goes and f see another kind of drop in, in supply here for this final backup phase. 
So Link is probably going to lead the way for some of the market here um, because, again, it was an undervalued asset. It had been sitting within this horizontal trading range uh, for quite some time. It's a big trading range, around 30%. So it's not an unvolatile space to be. But again, this movement out of the box here is actually has been fairly... Uh, fairly well noted along other areas in the sector. So if we take a look at Aave, we'll see something very similar, although the story is slightly different. Um, I, I must have had drawn this on log in our previous video, so I'll change this. There is another way, again, it's not always horizontal trading ranges. We've gone over this somewhat. They are less um, frequent where you find these rising gradient bottoms or flags, which are also like falling trading ranges. Again, just focus on the horizontal ranges for now. But again, we had phase A, our, our, our primary support, our buying climax, our first test, our spring, and then our big SOS. And now we're into what is this new trading range. So Ave produced uh, another really beautiful horizontal trading range here where you had your primary support. And this is actually probably a little clearer if you look on the one hour. Yeah, here you go. Primary support, um, your first buying climax highlighted here. Um, and then your secondary test, your first automatic rally, another test, spring. And again, guys, notice the characteristics of the wick on this spring. Now, I don't always use wicks, but I've been wanting to use the hike and ashy more and more because it's a great trend indicator. It does simplify some of your trading, uh, at least your investment decisions. If we go to candles, for instance, and we look at the candles versus the hike and ashy, there's way a lot more noise. I am much more interested in removing the noise from my charts. So here you just have short trend indicators in the one hour, and that's basically what the hike and ashy represents. Um, so these long wicks, large amount of supply coming into the market, and then again, rising on falling falling supply. This is the one of the most important secondary parts of that architecture of the trading range that we want all of you guys to be looking at. Because if you start to see the rising price on falling supply, you know that we're headed towards most likely a bullish indicator. Now, it's not always the case. There's just like anything, like we said, we've gone over multiple times. If you're hunting out in the wild, you're not trying to find something exactly. You want to look for just the general characteristics and architecture and the defining aspects of that architecture through the volume signature itself. So as we see, we rose into the SOS on rising supply. We'll likely see a backup that falls down on descending supply. So Ave here is in a really bullish setup, very similar to Link as well, and has already formed its spring. So it's in a very explosive place. Um, the next one we want to go over is DOT as well, another one of the uh, layer one protocols. Now, this is where things get a little interesting and we could make some conjecture here. Um, I actually think that we're, we're, we're probably witnessing a rising gradient bottom for, for DOT, something, something akin to this, because let's go over it. Our primary shakeout has this huge wick downwards um, and it was characterized by a lot of supply coming in, which we've gone over before, that you wanna see the, the primary shakeout actually bring, bring us down to the trading range specifically. Now, these markets are full of retail hands. And one of the reasons why we do these videos is because we want to help the retail investor not get shaken out so easily. They are the most common to make the mistakes. And this is one of the easiest ways to build confidence in where we are in the market is by doing these trading range studies and analysis. Ignore anyone who talks about head and shoulders primarily or penance or, because it's pretty much useless information. They can be inv invalidated, especially if you're in a bull market. They're almost totally useless to use. Whereas these horizontal trading ranges are significantly more accurate, especially when you combine them with that, again, the copacetic nature of the volume supply. So I actually believe this was the spring. And what's interesting here too is we have more supply that came into the market on the sell side and less price action to the downside than we had in our primary shakeout. So this is looking to, DOT is looking like it's setting up to be a pretty bullish uh, potential, right? So we're going to want to see something similar, a big sign of strength with, with vol, um, rising volume, uh, and then uh, a backup phase with, again, declining volume on the downside, something like this. This is what we would hope to see. So these, uh, you know, in general, too, I think um, something that was really nice is uh, one of our private members, shout out to Rasher for this one, uh, one of our Kodiak administrators. He shared something in our private group under the Wyckoff analysis. And I kind of want to go over that now because I think it's a beautiful representation of each one of these plays kind of in, in totality. Now, one of the things that's difficult is recognizing that 
um, there's baskets of these. So DeFi Perpetuals is a basket of tokens uh, created by FTX, and it allows you, to, instead of just having to pick like Aave or DOT or BAND, it allows you to invest in the entire sector by buying a basket of tokens effectively. And it's a per perpetual future swap, so you don't actually own any of the tokens, you just own a relationship to the underlying assets. A little bit of a complex conversation, not worth really having right now. But one of the things that he started to highlight was the uh, Jesse Livermore pattern that we had gone over in our previous ideas of this opening megaphone and the new trading range that's starting to form right here, highlighted by this spring. So the entire DeFi sector is on its way to a huge run. And what I assume is that when we look back at Bitcoin, it's going to take that run while Bitcoin goes through maybe even a potential secondary aspect of this test, which we had gone over by looking at um, some of our reaccumulation patterns. Uh, if we scroll down here, as you can see, phase C in schematic one actually has kind of tertiary tests of the trading range um, on, the, on the backup side of things. So if we go back here, again, I, I suspect we might see another test of the trading range here in Bitcoin and really giving breathing room to the DeFi sector here, especially when we see these multiple patterns aligning together, the, uh, the Livermore rising or uh, like uh, opening megaphone is a very bullish pattern. We had gone over this in Ethereum in the previous months as well. Uh, although it did break out a little early, that could we could look at that from a, a few different aspects. So if we go back, um, just as a kind of a retrospective analysis, and we take a look at what happened with Ethereum as well, you did see this rising megaphone pattern before you started to see the massive breakout. Once you start to break out of that megaphone pattern, that means most of the supply is gone, um, and you're going to see very bullish moves come into the ecosystem itself. So shout out to Rash for sharing that one. I do think that the DeFi Perpetuals is a really kind of, like a, a beautiful way, to, again, to track all of the interest. DeFi, I just thought it was a marketing sales word for a long time. It is an industry leader into itself because these are the new money Legos, not just, oh, we can transfer value from one place to another, but we're talking loans, credit scores, contracts for escrow, unique subscription payments, uh, a whole myriad of new financial products and services that used to be only in the hands of the elite of the financial regulators effectively. And we're playing with those in the technology sector. And I think the DeFi perpetuals that, that FTX has put together represents a really nice playbook to watch all of those at once. And you can find access to all of them without necessarily needing to pick the winner. So you can join those in the links down below, arcanebear.com forward slash FTX. That's how you find access to this basket. Um, and again, keeping an eye on these rising uh, megaphone patterns and the potential of this new horizontal trading range is taking place as we're right around the point of the control. We have a very obvious spring. Uh, again, here, if we zoom in this new trading range that's starting, uh, again, look at these wicks, look at the supply come in, look at our primary shakeout, uh, actually very close to the spring as well. Um, and less, less dramatic price considering um, how much volume came into the market here. So these are all leading indicators that we're going to see a lot of movement in the rest of the altcoin sector. Now I say that broadly, but I specifically mean that basically the DeFi baskets. So you can go to um, FTX, you can see what's in the DeFi basket. Probably should have already had that pulled up, but nonetheless, it is things like Band, Aave, Wi-Fi. Uh, I think they have Link in there too. Uh, you need Link for the DeFi sector to work properly. It's a price oracle. The providing randomness is, again, an extremely important aspect of this. Um, again, I think it's really, really important to keep an eye on these ideas as well. Um, so back to our main character movers, Ethereum. Now, Ethereum has already gone through a large part of its early stage price discovery, and it's in a basically a really large scale accumulation. So what I want to do right now is open up um, this chart here. So shout out to Glassnode for always producing such valuable information. What we want to do is look at the supply drop within the last uh, few days. So between January 19th and January 20th, the supply on the open market for Ethereum dropped multiple percent. So basically when we had this spring uh, notify like here, a, again, a look, notice the wicks coming down. You can see the large amount of supply coming into the market. The reduced price spread or the effort versus result here was limited. Um, and now, again, we're rising on falling uh, supply, 
which is an extremely important part of the rest of the characteristic of, of phase C into D. I don't think we're out of phase C yet. We could see another little dip down, um, but because we had a sign of strength above the box, I do suspect that, that uh, Ethereum is going to turn bullish quite quickly. And again, we are rising on falling supply, which is another important characteristic to look at because just as we had noted on this glass node chart, the supply has moved into stronger and stronger hands. When you see the day that the spring took place pretty much on January 21st, the supply drop dramatically. Like here, I'll zoom in a little bit more here just so you can see. On the basically the day we had the spring, they bought up an enormous amount of that supply of Ethereum and they took it off the open market and put it into cold storage. And again, this is important to note because this is what we would call strong hands, is when supply leaves the markets and goes into cold storage effectively. So Ethereum is showing very strong characteristics and it is in a very beautiful uh, accumulation pattern right now. Um, once we see strength, again, above this trading range, I do suspect the backup phase is gonna bring us somewhere of $2,600 and on the road as high as six to $10,000 over the coming months, maybe even as early as like December of 2021. The crazy thing about a bull market is once the supply really starts to diminish from the exchanges, the volatility and the capability of the price going up really quickly increases dramatically. Uh, which brings us to Bitcoin. We normally start with Bitcoin, but because we're going over altcoins, which again, I'm highlighting by saying the DeFi sector instead, we just kind of use the same nomenclature that everyone uses for those click baity thumbnails to try to convert as many people into watching these videos as, videos as possible, try to save the new, newbie retail investors from following all the horrible advice that a lot of people give uh, in general. Uh, and again, I don't, I don't suggest you follow anything I do. This is just hopefully uh, an entrance and a guidance to you to do your own homework and, and really study the, the greats. People like Richard Wyckoff in the 1930s had hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of subscribers in 1930. Right? Jesse Livermore made hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, Jim Simmons made tens of billions. And these guys play based off these types of strategies. And they're repeatable because you're basically charting human nature. So I do suspect that, again, as we saw in, uh, let's go back to, we're going to have to use both of these here. In phase C for our reaccumulation schematic, we are going to have another dip down into the bottom of the trading range. It's very likely something like this um, before moving into phase. So we have phase A phase B, we just in phase C and moving into phase D. I think it's going to take a while um, for us to, for Bitcoin's basically going to trend sideways while we see the rest of the market garner some of the attention based off the initial conversation we had gone over that when you have an overvalued asset, you want to move some of that profit into more undervalued assets. And Link was clearly one of those undervalued assets. Ave, Dot, and the whole DeFi sector was is in generally, I think, undervalued. I don't, rec I don't think people really recognize what it means to have these new financial technology tools in the hands of crazy people like you and me and the rest of the <laughs> crypto ecosystem. So Bitcoin actually provided us some really fun stuff. Now, in our private group, you guys had asked me to go over this as well. This is the Bitcoin liquid supply change. We had gone over this in previous videos. This is just a different way to look at it. Um, and I think more importantly, this is going to become really important to recognize for when the bull market is over um, because you'll see a lot of supply come onto the market. So right now, all we can see is 2020. But if we go backwards, you can start to see the uh, peak out of 2021 and the supply come into the open market and then the price drop as that supply started to hit the open exchanges. Currently, where we are in 2021 right now, you, all you're seeing is supply leave the market. Again, that increases the volatility. So it's not a direct correlation that supply leaves and the price goes up. It's that as supply leaves, the volatility goes up. And that's in both directions because if supply were to hit the market, it could just as easily affect the price to the downside. Volatility through time here is affected in both directions. So keep that in mind. But the important part here is to recognize that once we start seeing um, th this particular metric in the future, maybe when we're at hundreds of thousands of dollars per Bitcoin and big chunk chunks of supply come onto the open market, you're going to notice a dramatic time to be like, okay, this is probably when we're getting near the top is when you see all of this supply, just as we did back here in 2018, hit the open markets um, and the price drop consecutively afterwards. Now, again, you saw a lot of supply come into the market around 13,000, basically profit taking. 
and again here at around 7,000 more profit taking. And then as soon as we had the spring in, in March uh, during the pandemic, you can see every day, pretty much every day since then, you've had supply, big, big chunks of supply leave the market. And there's another way to look at this too, and this is what we've gone over in the past, is the balance on exchanges, because this is effectively where like Chainlink isn't gathering data from OTC. Like if I'm a I'm a miner and you're you're a buyer and I sell, is it like a peer to peer contract? No one's picking that price and that supply change up effectively, right? So what we want to keep an eye on is the amount of supply on the open exchanges because that's where Chainlink gets its price data from. It doesn't get it from two people making a, a conjecture deal in the background which is done up by lawyers effectively, that in no way, shape or form does Chainlink have access to that data. So it's somewhat unreliable in, in terms of understanding how much a actual movement is going on. But what we can see is that it gives us a very clear relationship between the price that's on the exchanges. And again, remember, the more Bitcoin that leaves the exchanges, the higher the probability of volatility becomes, right? So at this time, as we're seeing all the Bitcoin leave the open, open exchanges, again, this liquid supply change going into cold wallets effectively, uh, leaving the exchanges. There's another way to look at this too. I think that the um, exchange ba balance stacked. This was a really nice one that, that Glassnode put together. Um, do, 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 yeah, again, here you can see on December 24th, December 30th, you had a Coinbase with the largest chunk of Bitcoin on there, almost 973,000 Bitcoin on Coinbase. And then on between December 31st and January 4th, it went from 900, it went from like 870,000 down to 820,000. So almost 40 to 50,000 Bitcoin left Coinbase in a four to five day period. So keeping an eye on these charts um, as we move forward into time is going to be one of the ways we can really tell that the bull market is finding its end because we'll be able to look how much of this open supply is coming onto the market and currently it's leaving. So we're still in the early stages of this bull market and the more of this supply that leaves, the higher the volatility, which means our run to hundreds of thousands of dollars is going to come very quickly. Uh, keep that in mind. The, with the price change from 10 to 20 to 40 versus 40 to 80 to 100 is going to be like blazing again because of that added volatility from the decreased supply on the open market. So thank you guys all for joining us today. That was the first part of our episode. Remember, we always do live streams, so we try to cut the most important data for you guys into two parts. If you want right now, we just brought on a new full-time writer. Shout out to Baloo. Uh, we are really appreciative of that. So for anyone who wants to join our private group today, if you look in the links below, it's arcanebear.com forward slash Baloo. If you use the coupon Baloo, you will get a 10% discount on that code. Now, it will only run for 24 hours, so if you want to get that discount, sign up now because after that the discount won't work effectively so keep that in mind we'll, we'll run more ideas like this but it was a uh, our way to welcome blue because anyone who signs up for those links he actually gets direct cuts of that commission for the the work that he does as a writer and a producer of content for our private group so thank you to blue and our private group um, we always look to be able to provide you guys more valuable content and data and this is one of our ways to do that is to bring on more great uh, content creators and, and writers such as uh, such as Baloo. Okay, so where does that lead us? It leads us actually back to Bitcoin and for at least the temporary time to go over the questions in the live chat. Now, again, if we were watching, and I, and I hope some of you guys are, these horizontal trading ranges, take the time to draw and to write up all these exchanges, like all the changes in the idea, be like, oh, look, here's the spring, here's the volatility. It really gives you it allows you to build the patience necessary to prove the confidence you need to make those market adjustments based off what you're seeing. So instead of like just running around and, oh my God, we're going up and just buying, you can take your time and you can look at the charts and you can recognize where you are and make a much more confident decision because one of the biggest problems is that the big boys have a lot of money and they shake out the weak retail hands and that's exactly what we wanna stop and allow you guys to be more profitable, not financial advice, by going through this educational process. So thank you guys all for that. Um, let's see, I'm going to, uh, let's take a look at some of your guys' thoughts and questions and we'll go over, we're gonna make today's episode a little shorter so we won't go over too much. Just a few thoughts here and here uh, over the questions as well. Uh, so what about the whole XRP story? Look guys, I've never really liked XRP. It's not 
great technology. It didn't provide any problems or it didn't solve any big problems. All they were trying to do is sell products to the banks, which already screw you. So they're basically going to provide a way for the banks to run cheaper and then still probably screw you equally. I'm not a big fan of that. Never been a, a fan of XRP, although in 2017, I did buy some. And then I gave it to my girlfriend. She's got like 300,000, but she doesn't know she has like 300,000 XRP because what does she, we don't talk anymore. But anyways, funny story. <laughs> One point is almost worth like a million dollars. Uh, that's uh, ridiculous. Uh, we bought it. It was in like early 2016 before 2017. Marcus started like, hey, I'm going to sign out. I'm going to buy a little bit of XRP. I'm going to start around. Anyways, total side note. I'm not a fan of XRP. I don't think they're going to recover from this security decision by the SEC. They were given the opportunity to settle a while back, and they didn't. Poor move. They're going to try to argue it. Now, maybe they'll win, but they've already been delisted. And when you've already got big market leaders, why go around with the undecision? Wait till things clear out, you know, or just, it's just such a simple thing to do. Follow the market leaders, guys. That's not, that's not that hard. <laughs> Like Bitcoin and Ethereum and Link, they're all market leaders, you know, like, keep, like, just look. It's easy to see in the percentage gains. Blue the Bear says, yo, 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 great to have you, Blue. Thank you. Dropping discounts. Yep, just to, we want to support our, our uh, private content creators and the, the people that help build uh, more value into, into our private ecosystem as well. Um, cool. Let's take a look at a few, one or just a few more of your guys' questions today. I want to, I want to keep today's episode short. Um, awesome. Uh, Jacob4 says, uh, recently my wife started getting into crypto FOMO. She got like five to 10 grand to invest in Bitcoin ETH Avalanche ADA. Mostly to huddle for it. We were watching together now. Any thoughts? My thoughts here are... I, I was I was kind of laughing about something while I was taking a shit this morning. I don't even know if I should share it with you because I was like, oh, Tio, you're so rude. Well, per, first off, think about the thoughts that go through your mind at like 630 in the morning. While you're <laughs> I want I, God, God, I, I know a bunch of women probably love this content. So I, I, women are very reliable. So one thing I can suggest is that just keep showing up monthly. If you make monthly investments for the next 10 years, you'll ultimately be successful. If you just try to throw everything all at once, you're being much more masculine. You want to take the feminine approach here, which is gain success through time. Not try just to be all, like have blowout successes because it's also how you have blowout failures, right? So if you, I would follow her, like I would kind of let, like, let's let the feminine aspect of investing lead, which is Find a particular time of every month, maybe near the new moon, unless I'd, I'd try to give you like the images of why I thought I was being ridiculous this morning. <laughs> and invest then. Make it like, oh, I have this much of revenue every, every month uh, from a month-on-month -month basis. Use that to really build a portfolio. Uh, I think that this is a much smarter way to go. It removes the emotions and allows you to take a step back and let the day that you want to execute, like it's, it's the 22nd today, like we're buying more crypto. That's a much calmer way to go and you will likely achieve higher results because you won't be as emotionally attached to the outcome and glued to your portfolio bank. Oh my God, it's going up, it's going down. We should sell, should we buy? This is where all the common mistakes are made. So just remove that and, and average through time. That's the best, that's the, my best uh, advice. Peter Sm Smith says, hey Tio, what's up? Good choice with Baloo, he's awesome. Thank you both for your contributions. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm really, really excited about that. P.S. Join the private group. Glad I did, says Peter Smith. Well, that's a personal recommendation from Mr. Peter Smith. We appreciate that. Again, we will be running that 10% uh, um, 10, 10, 10 discount by joining with the links below and using the coupon code Baloo, B-A-L-O-O. -O. It's written in the links below. Um, more on the old girlfriend and her XRP story. Well, you can look her up. She's a fairly well-known artist. Her name is Faye Halliday. Y'all can ping her and be like, what are you doing? <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't do that. I would prefer that we, we keep, but definitely check out her art. She's a fantastic artist. I was always inspired by the work that she did. Um, so if you're interested, it's worth taking a look at. Um, question, what do I do if we have a lot of money to invest right now? Should we still average in and out over time? Right now, it's the best way to go because Bitcoin is going to be likely trending sideways. If you're smart about it, you'll give yourself the time to make in incredibly wiser decisions by executing. Just like going to the gym. If you go to the gym and you're like, yeah, I'm going to get ripped and get all my gains today, you won't. But if you keep showing up to the gym, like let's say on a weekly basis, 
and you do that over the 10 year period, you might end up like the rock, right? That's how you get there. It's by, well, actually you'd probably need to go like every day, but that's a different story. Just think about that long-term gain through time. Even if it is a large amount of money, think about decades. That's really where the investor lives. Now, you have two types of people, the investor and the speculator, and you wanna separate them because they operate entirely differently. The speculator is prone to blowouts and massive gains all at this, like within months uh, apart from each other. You can see that by watching the Binance board on the options players and the people that use high amounts of leverage. They'll make a lot of money and then lose a lot of money. It's a much more volatile game, whereas investing is really designed to be gains through time. Okay. Awesome. I think we're going to leave it at that, guys. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, we are really, really grateful to have you. Um, nice. Um, hourglasses, arcane bear warriors and link Marines. I, I try to want to stay away from like the cultish behavior of, of like, Oh, I'm a link Marine. A good portfolio should be diversified because it also understands that you don't know who the winner is going to be. And it allows you to play more intelligently because you're, you're, you're meeting the fact of the unknown can happen. And that's a really important part about investing is, is meeting that unknown and embracing the fact that we don't know. If you're like, oh yeah, Link is gonna do this and I'm gonna put all my money into Link, well then you're not following like the simple strategy of just playing with the market leaders. Although Ch Chainlink is a market leader, don't get me wrong, um, it's, much, it's done much better through diversification and the acceptance that we don't know the outcome to everything over the next 10 years. So I have a little dot, I have a little avalanche, and I make these venture capital plays based off that type of sentiment. Um, we got a super chat from Netlux TV. Would love to hear your thoughts on Nest. Haven't heard anyone talking about it. Their tech is legit and needed service. Long-term chart looks good. Well, because you gave us a super chat, I will definitely look at Nest here. Um, let's fire this over. Uh, I'll take a look. I don't. I won't be able to look up what the tech is in any short advice or any in any short format because I'm not. I'm not a tech guy. I asked my tech team for those types of questions. It is not on Binance, so I'm forced to look at it in Hoibi. Already not looking great, although we'll take a look anyways. Now, you said the long-term chart looks good. Uh, let's see. Okay. Well, this is the long-term chart. Uh, so I, I think what we were, it's too early. I think what you're witnessing is the first selling climax, although, again, not enough volume coming in for me to decide that. I'd be really weary about this kind of stuff, guys. Um, look, it's, the long-term chart is nothing but down. You may have seen a primary selling climax here, but it's not signified by the amount of volume I'd want to see coming into the market. This, I mean, even if it was a selling climax, this would be an automatic rally, which means you still need your secondary test in your spring before you seal any real type of breakout. Now, we could argue, well, maybe it's a rising gradient bottom and you see a spring like this, but it's too early to tell. I don't think there's enough long-term data here. And again, because I'm not my tech team, I can't say. Um, and they never told me anything about it either. So what do I know? Um, I guess what, and you know, just in general here too, guys, um, we, we can look at some of the um, flute. You know what I'm actually going to do? I, I brought out the, uh, I brought out the oud today. So we're not going to play the flute, but I brought out the oud. We can jump back to Ethereum here. Um, and let's look at the smaller time frames just for a minute um, to go over a bit more of the, the, the sounder ideas. So we can see right now that it's, it's almost like um, we saw our primary selling climax, uh, our automatic rally, our secondary test, um, and we're seeing our spring, and we're actually likely witnessing um, our, our first kind of LPS and backup phase. This looks like a smaller trading range to me. Um, some of our private members did highlight this. I believe it was Jerry, Jerry Bear, that this looks like a new horizontal trading range is taking place with the spring, again, highlighted by the significant wick and the amount of volume that came in here. We'll probably come down to test the POC. Um, if we close above that 230 mark and keep moving upwards, uh, I do believe uh, Ethereum is not that far from breaking out. Again, when we look at, at Link here, we we're in the last parts of the backup phase, but even still, you could see a return to the middle of this trading range pretty easily. Like, it's not like, oh, it's going to break out right now. Just jump in. Oh, my God, don't don't ever do that. That's just silly. But as you can see, the point of control here is right along the middle line of this horizontal trading range. Uh, if I remove the trading range, you can see we will probably see a return to around 2190 as our final LPS before we break out. Anyways. We're going to leave it at that. Thank you guys all for joining us. Over 500 live viewers. Remember to give us the thumbs up. I'm going to end today's episode with a little bit of oud, um, just because you guys always like the music aspect. 
um, I wanted to uh, go over this and play you one of my favorite uh, instruments to end today's episode. This is Teal with the Arcane Bear. Again, guys, remember to give us those thumbs up. Uh, remember to stay calm. Do your homework. Read, read your books. Play your instruments. Whatever you need to do to spend the time so that you don't panic sell or panic buy. The FOMO is real. Okay, I love you guys. That's it. That's all you get. This is an oud, in case you want to know. It's an Arabic instrument. Thank you guys all for joining us, Teal the Arcane Bear. Give us a thumbs up if you like this content. And uh, thank you guys. I really appreciate all the support. I love that we get to do this stuff together and that you guys want me to end the episodes with uh, um, music. Uh, that's fantastic for me. It's like we get to have a little live jam. So thank you guys. Okay, there we go. Uh, we'll see you guys on tomorrow's episode because we're going to do a live stream every day that we possibly can for the rest of the year. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of a personal goal of mine. We broke over 30,000 subscribers too. So congratulations to us for uh, hitting new all-time highs. Um, I really, again, I, I can't be more grateful for the support. We'll see you guys on tomorrow's episode. <sighs>